My name is Cullen Strawn, and I'm a curator at MIM. Behind me is our hip hop exhibit. Hip hop is a genre that's been extremely influential and popular, not only within the United States, but throughout the world. In New York City in the 1970s, urban youth combined several expressive elements together to form hip hop. There was DJing or playing turntables, increasingly like musical instruments. There was emceeing or uh, speaking over the music, often with rhymes. There was break dancing and there was graffiti writing or aerosol art. Two Technics turntables and a Gemini mixer are from a time when DJs were the foundation of parties. A couple of important records called breakbeat records are displayed, and uh, these contain short sections that are fun to dance to. So a DJ would use the mixer to switch back and forth between two copies of the same record in order to isolate that special section or break to keep the crowd going and excited. Eventually, hip hop embraced other technologies, uh, including drum machines like the Roland Rhythm Composer for creating beats, and samplers like the Emu SB1200, which allowed performing groups to incorporate sounds from any recorded source, not just vinyl records. Well, these technologies actually played a role in pushing the DJ farther and farther into the background, and in some cases, out of the picture altogether, as the commercial music industry focused more on rap groups and less on hip hop culture as a whole. But DJs continued doing what they loved and uh, became virtuosic in their musicianship. DJ Qbert is one of the world's most influential scratch DJs or turntablists. He developed an instrument called the QFO, which combines a turntable, a mixer, and other controls into a single portable device. For what we do as DJs, we're manipulating sound and, and you know, scratching it and, and changing the way sound is by taking its time and moving it in reverse and forward and playing with its volume and, and you know there's all these different aspects of music you know the color the the, the, the tone the the emotion the, the melody all these things but then there's a the hidden one which is the intention behind it you know when i'm scratching I, i'm trying to do that it's kind of like reiki through sound i was fortunate to work with such and champ styles who are local aerosol artists in uh, creating the wonderful, colorful framing of the entire exhibit. Graffiti has pretty much taken the Roman alphabet and you are just totally owning it and taking control of it. You're flipping your letters upside down, you're putting them in reverse, you're taking a part of an S and adding a part of, a, of, of an L to it and you are just slamming these letter styles and, and it's just, it's, when you're looking at it, you're seeing, you're seeing a burst of excitement of, a, of life. Hip hop is a very live culture and we wanted to have a live event celebrating the artistic expression of it all. As I often do, I gave a public talk explaining the concept and the components of the exhibit. Such and Champ Styles were here painting, the Furious Styles crew brought dancing, and DJ Cuber joined us as well. I was even invited to perform on a West African hunter's harp with Cubert. It may be the first time that that's happened anywhere, and uh, it made perfect sense for it to happen at MIM. At MIM, we exist to share music with the public. Following the celebration, several people approached me independently and said that they'd always just assumed that hip hop was bad. But after having a chance to experience the exhibit and the event, they took away a deeper understanding of hip hop's artistry and actually began to develop an appreciation for it. For me as a curator, that's very rewarding.